This is chapter 8, lesson 3, function equations. So, a blank blank is a function whose graph is a line. In that blank, you're going to write linear function. So a linear function is a graph whose is a function whose graph is a line. So, writing an equation to represent a function. You can use an equation to represent a function. The input or independent variable represents the x value, and the output or the dependent variable represents the y value. An equation expresses the dependent variable in terms of the independent variable. So, for number one, write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. So, as you can see, I'm given my inputs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and my outputs, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Well, we can notice that this is a geometric sequence, or sorry, an arithmetic sequence. It goes up by 3 each time. You can also see that I'm multiplying 1 times 3 to get 3, 2 times 3 to get 6, 3 times 3 to get 9, 4 times 3 to get 12, and 5 times 3 to get 15. So the value of y is equal to 3 times the value of x. So as you can see, we did that. We multiplied each of these by 3 to get our output. So the equation that represents the function is y equals 3 times my input value, or 3 times x. All right, you can also graph a function if the graph is a line, the function is then called a linear equation. When graphing the function, the input is the x-coordinate and the output is the y-coordinate. So as you can see, here's my function. My y is my output values from the range of the function. So those are my y values. f is the name of the function. And x is the input values from the domain of the function. So here's my domain, or my x values, and my range are my y values. So, for number two, it says graph y equals 3x. Step one, I made a table of ordered pairs. So I made a table, here's my x values, here's my y values. Here's my equation, y equals 3x. So I put 3x up here and I multiplied each of my values of x to get my y values. So zero, three times zero gives me zero. 1, 3 times 1 gives me 3, 2, 3 times 2 gives me 6. Okay, so these are my x values and these are my y values so that I made them into points. So 0, 0 is my first point, 1, 3 is my second point, and 2, 6 is my third point. Next, I graph each ordered pair. I draw a line through each point. So 0, 0 starts down here, okay? And then 1, 3, I go over 1 and up to 3. There's another point. So here's my first point right here. I go over 1, up to 3, because this tells me to go over and then up. Okay. Then my next one is to go over 2 and up to 6. Okay. And then I connected my points. All right, number 3 says Martino constructed the graph show which shows the height of his, his cactus after several years of growth. Make a function table for the input-output values. So, here's my cactus height, here's my graph, years of growth, so it grew one, two, three years, and how high it grew, there are little points. Okay. So there are three input values, one, two, and three. Okay, I just went along, here are my points. Here's my first point, my second point, and my third point. Okay, so I get an input value of 1 with an output value of 42, an input value of 2, an output value of 44, an input value of 3, and an output value of 46. Okay, so there's my table, 1, 2, 3, 42, 44, and 46. All right, there are a couple of try problems out below. I want you to go ahead, pause the video, and when you're done, we'll go over the answers together. All right, now that you've had a chance to try out the try problems, let's go over the answers together. So, for letter A, I said write the 
write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. So let's take a look at the function, or let's take a look at the table we have. Our input is 1, our output is 16. Our input is 2, our output is 32. Input 3 outputs 48, input 4 outputs 64, and input 5 we have an output of 80. So I want to think about what can I multiply each time to go up by these numbers. Well, 1 times 16 gives me 16. Does 2 times 16 give me 32? Let's try it. 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3, so 32. So it does work. So each time I'm multiplying by 16. So y equals 16x. All right, for letter B, it says graph y equals 2x plus 3. So I can do a couple of different things. I, first, I'm going to make a table. So here's my x value. And here's my y value, okay? So I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick numbers for my x value, for my domain. So I'm going to start with 0. Always recommend you start with 0. It's usually the easiest one. 1. 2, and we'll go with 2. So you should at least pick three numbers. I always recommend doing 0, 1, 2 because they're usually the easier numbers to do. Okay? So this means I take 2 times 0 plus 3. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. Then I do 2 times 1 plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. Then I do 2 times 2 plus 3. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So there's my numbers, okay? So I start with 0, and I go up to 3, because that's my first one. My first one was 0, 3. My second point is 1, 5. So I go 1, 5, and I make a dot. So over 1 and up to 5. My third point is 2, 7. Well, 2, 7 is off. So I can stop, and then I connect my, lock, my dots to form a line. All right, for letter C, the graph shows the total amount Y that you spend if you buy one book and X magazines. Make a function table for the input-output values. Write an equation from the graph that could be used to find the total amount Y if you buy one book and X magazines. Okay. So if I buy one magazine, I pay $20. If I buy two magazines, I pay $25. If I buy three magazines, I pay $30. And if I buy four magazines, I pay $35. So now I have to figure out my equation. So I can write an equation from the graph that could be used to find the total amount y if you buy one book and x magazines. Okay. So I can notice that each of these is going up by 5, which tells me that that must be the cost of my magazines. My magazines are 5 each time, because I'm going up by 5. 20 to 25 is 5, 25 to 30 is a plus 5, and 30 to 35. So this is all plus 5. Okay, so that tells me the first part of my equation, y equals 5x, okay, because that's the magazines that I bought. Remember, this is the total amount plus the book, so I have to figure out what my book cost. Well, if I plug in 1 for x, 5 times 1 is 5, and I need to get to 20, so that means 15. So that means my book must cost $15. Alright, and that is the end of Chapter 8, Lesson 3.